Hey everyone, so this is a first look at the brand new TCL 65 inch QLED Q7 HDR TV. It was just released a couple weeks ago on May 15th, 2023. The Q7 line comes in four sizes, a 55 inch, 65 inch, which is what we have here, the 75 inch and an 85 inch, the 55 and 65 inch ones. Uh, both retail under $1,000, which is a fantastic value, in my opinion, for all the features you're getting for the price. Um, the model here that I have is, again, the 65-inch. This is the 65Q750G model number. All right, uh, this TV is very similar to the TCL 65R655 from 2022. Some newer upgrades and differences. I was actually eyeballing the Q6 earlier this month and almost bought it. And then I saw the new Q7 was about to come out and I found a weekend sale online. And I actually got this thing for 850 bucks, which is 100 bucks less than the Q6 is currently being sold for. So again, the Q7, I was actually able to get this for cheaper than last year's model, the Q6, um, on a weekend deal. The Q6 and the Q7 currently both retail at $999.99, so penny under a thousand there. Um, as a real quick disclaimer, this won't be a full-on review as I'm not a TV expert, but since this TV is so new, and there's no other reviews out there yet. I figured I would show everyone a first look at the TV itself, uh, some of the features it offers, and how the interface and settings work. Um, but again, I'm not a TV expert. I honestly don't even understand all of the different features here. So if I misspeak on anything, my apologies. You can definitely correct me in the comments here. Um, so anyways... Uh, Let's first go over some of the features of the Q7, then we'll take a closer look at the actual TV itself. Um, I also have a gaming computer with a, what is it, 3060 Ti gaming card in there, a graphics card in there. Um, so we'll take a quick look at uh, that. It does have some advanced gaming features on this. So anyways, I'm um, on to the features. It has one USB input and four HDMI inputs. Uh, two of the HDMI inputs are 2.1. One of the inputs is at 4K 144 hertz. The other is 4K at 120 hertz. There's also a dedicated HDMI eARC input. Uh, eARC stands for Enhanced Audio Return Channel and allows you to transmit the original full resolution audio signal through an HDMI cable to reproduce the best sound without any compromises. So audiophiles will appreciate having this feature on one of the HDMI ports. The TCL Q7 has a 120 hertz native panel with over 200 local dimming zones that helps provide deeper blacks without image blooming. It has High Brightness Pro LED backlight panel with up to 1,000 nits peak brightness. Uh, it also has TCL's new AIPQ Engine Gen 3 it has a deep learning AI, the third generation advanced processor intelligently optimizes the color, contrast, and clarity for superior 4K HDR experience. It has HDR Ultra, which includes Dolby Vision IQ, HDR10+, Plus, HDR10, and HLG. And it also has DTS Virtual X for premium picture and audio. It has ambient room light sensor, that is supported or supposed to adjust the brightness of the TV based on your current room's lighting. Another feature of the Q7 has motion rate 480 with MEMC frame insertion. The Q7 is also IMAX certified for meeting high requirements in resolution, contrast, brightness, color, and sound. On the gaming end, the Q7 has TLC, TCL's Game Accelerator 240. That's supposed to power up to 240 hertz VRR gaming experiences. A couple other gaming features are the auto game mode and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. Um, all in all, this is a pretty stacked premium QLED TV that to me feels like a total steal for under $1,000. 
Um, like I said, I almost bought the Q6 earlier this month, so obviously I was looking over a bunch of different models. Um, some of the models, I forget the exact, I think it's like a M6 or something from Vizio. I almost gave into that and bought that. Um, when I look more into the reviews, not only did they not really seem so well, but it, apparently Vizio turned into garbage in recent years. I was kind of unaware of that. Um, and most of their panels uh, seem to go out within a year. Uh, in fact, this TCL is replacing a 2018 Vizio, uh, just a standard 4K TV, um, 60 hertz, all that. Um, the back panels started going out, or the LED panels. So, anyways, um, I don't want this video to be too long for you guys. So, this is just taking a real quick look at a lot of the things we just went over there. Um, this is a 65 inch that I have. Uh, you can see it retails at a thousand. Um, there's a bunch of the features we went over there. Um, here's the different screen sizes and their prices, the 55, 65, 75, and 85 inch. Um, so again, there's no reviews out there really for this Q7 line just yet. Um, but based on the Q6 reviews, this is over at ratings.com. Um, they have very in-depth reviews on their TVs. Looking at the Q6 overall, got an 8.5. Um, I use this, like I said, with the gaming PC, and I use it for um, PC monitor. So having something at 8.0 is pretty good for that for me. Um, this hits all the spots I want it to for the most part. Um, so... This is the Q6, again, that we're looking at here. Uh, the Q7 is kind of an upgrade of the Q6, so I would imagine that once ratings.com, uh, for example, gets a hold of this TV, I would imagine it's either going to rate around an 8.5 or most likely higher. So anyways, I did want to show you guys um, the actual TV, so let's start getting to that. Um, I'm going to go through the menu, the options, um, kind of show you guys the interface, um, stuff that, like that. So the first thing is the remote is pretty nice. It's not metal, but it has like a brushed kind of metal looking plastic on it. It is backlit and I noticed it has some kind of a sensor in it because when I pick it up is when it, the backlight actually turns on. Um, it's not the brightest, but it's bright enough for me. Um, I really like the layout. I like how long it is. Um, it feels real good in the hand. The buttons, um, feel great. It definitely feels like a more premium remote control compared to my old Vizio and basically any of my other TVs that I have. Um, I do have a Fire TV in my front room that has an RR remote. Um, this does have, uh, what is it called? Google Voice, I believe it's called, where you can hold this down and speak to it. Um, has these preset buttons here. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice remote. So taking a look at the actual TV. So it is currently off. In fact, let's go, let's go take a little bit of a closer look. So it does have like a metal brushed benzel. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it to focus here. Um, hopefully guys, you guys can see that kind of okay-ish. My lighting in here is not that good, but if I turn on any more lighting, once I turn on the TV, you're gonna see the glare. Um, power cable is over here on the left. Disregard my cord management behind this TV. It is an absolute disaster. Um, all of your ports are on this side. My apologies for this being so dark. So you got your four HDMI ports here. That fourth one down there is the eARC one, the coax cable, your USB. Um, I believe that's your headphones out. Uh, your digital optical out. This thing does. I have this on a on a mount right now, but it does come with obviously the legs. One cool thing about the legs is if you're going to use them. You can either have them positioned, let me focus in there, or at least attempt to. You can have them facing this way or facing 
this way based on your preference. Um, that'll also help with if you have a sound bar, if you put them this way, you have more space in the middle. Uh, the Q6 actually had a stand that was in the middle. Um, so I believe that messed with some people's sound bars. Obviously, I don't need a sound bar. I have some big old tower RCA speakers with Sony system down here. So I'm good on that. Um, anyways, let's actually take a look at this TV here. Let's turn it on. All right, you can see it just kind of turns right on for you. You have the, what would you call this? The Google TV interface runs on Android, um, comes with all the typical apps you'd want here. Um, so yeah, that's your basic welcome interface there. This button up at the top, make sure we're focused in here. We'll let you pick through your different HDMI ports, AirPlay, Antenna, TV, et cetera, et cetera. let you go back home as well. Um, that's obviously your power button up here, if you can see it. Uh, that's the speak button I was talking about. I don't know what this person button is. Let's press it. Oh, so that's the choose your account. This is your setting buttons here. We'll get to that in a minute. Up, down, left, right. Okay is enter. My apologies if you really can't see it. Um, I guess we don't need to go. It's a pretty typical remote. We don't need to go through all these. It has some TV Plus thing, an information button. The information button's kind of cool. Um, I guess right now there is no information. But basically up in the upper right corner, it'll show what resolution you're on, your frame rate, um, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take just a quick look in Netflix here. I'm not going to play too much content because I don't want to get any copyright things on YouTube. So, not too sure what's going on here. Probably went to a blank screen. This is going to be an unedited video, so whatever happens here is going to happen. Okay, so I press back to the home button. Let's try Netflix again. I've noticed on all my TVs, Netflix tends to be the slowest loading app, so it's just taking a second. It didn't take this long last night when I was watching it, though. I, did, I got this TV just yesterday, so I've only had one evening and this morning kind of to mess around with it. I don't know what's going on with Netflix. I don't know if it's the TV having an issue, the app having an issue, Netflix is having an issue. Not too sure. Let's try just going to Prime Video instead. So I press the Prime Video Quick button. That looks like it's loading right up. Um, but I actually haven't signed into that yet. So let's try Netflix again. Netflix starts back up. I can't explain that one. Uh, to me, that seems like it might have been a little bit of a, a buggy buggy deal going on with the TV itself. So so one cool thing I noticed last night, um, oh, let me turn the volume here. Well, I guess while we're on the volume, I can talk about the volume and the speakers in general. The speakers have a very full sound to me. I'm not an expert on sound quality audiophile stuff. It has a very full sound to me. It's not, doesn't have a very deep bass, but it sounds good enough. Um, you're definitely, if you want to get the most out of your TV, you're going to want a sound bar or um, an actual receiver with speaker system, surround sound system, kind of like what I have. Uh, but the built-in sound, it's, it's pretty good. Like I said, it's full. It's not tiny or anything like that, but it doesn't have a very deep bass. Um, so anyways, with the Dolby IQ, whatever, I'm going to be miss saying all this stuff i noticed like i'm watching this new this arnold show fubar when you first turn it on it's in dolby vision atmos uh the tv automatically adjusts to it so i'm gonna resume this episode and you're gonna see up in the top corners okay. not too much information going on there all right let's go back to the home menu Start looking at, I'm going to press the settings button up here. 
Let's take a quick look through these settings. So here's kind of your side panel. Let me focus that in there. There we go. Um, you have some kind of a screen. I haven't looked through all this stuff. You have screensaver. You have your inputs, um, some kind of picture thing. Uh, your Wi-Fi setup, um, accessibility, your power on preferences, uh, notifications. Uh, let's see what kind of notifications it's given me. Personalized ads, some AirPlay stuff, set up my power on preferences, I'm just gonna clear those. Um, so let's go into the main settings up here and take just a quick glance around. So under channels and inputs, um, you can do a channel scan. I guess if you have a coax cable uh, with over the air TV, I don't have any of that going on. I gotta remember to keep adjusting the focus here for you guys. Um, you can edit your channels, set your region. I'm not too worried about this channel stuff. I'm not using over the air. Um, underneath their inputs, you can adjust them here. Um, I'm not gonna go over everything, but you can kind of see the different settings we have here. Um, HDMI one. Set to my game console, I set it to HDMI 2. We're not to the PC part of this video yet. Again, this is all off the top of my head, you know, my experience with this so far. I will say on the HDMI 1 where it was 144 hertz, um, when I had my computer hooked up to this last night, it kept, the screen kept going off and going on, going off and going on. It like couldn't, I guess, get set into 120 hertz right. I guess it was struggling with the, the HDMI 1 port, the 144 hertz. I switched it over to HDMI 2, which I guess is capped at 120 hertz from my understanding. And ever since then, like my computer runs great. It's no more of the screen flickering or anything like that. Um, so I'm keeping it on HDMI 2 right now. Um, HDMI 3, I think it's just a 4K 60 hertz port. If I'm thinking correctly, um, HDMI 4 is another 4K um, 60 hertz with the eARC ER for the enhanced audio stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then you have an AV here. So let's go back, go back again, go into display and sound. You have intelligent settings here. You have some intelligent picture settings, adaptive brightness. Um, the adaptive brightness automatically adjusts screen brightness based on your ambient light, ambient room light. Um, that's a nice setting. I have that on there. Um, adaptive content, detox incoming, unencrypted content type, SDR, Dolby Vision, automatically adjusts picture quality for each mode. Don't know too much about that. Currently have it off. I might mess around with that a little bit later. Um, intelligent sound detects incoming audio type and automatically adjusts the sound mode. I don't know too much about this, but hey, it sounds like something I might want to have on. So I'm going to turn that on here. Back up. Let's go over to picture. So currently on low power, I will say last night I changed this. Um, I think I put it on smart HDMR. HDR. I think I had it on. I don't really care about my power consumption. So here's the brightness. Let's go all the way dark. And again, you're watching the video through a phone, so I know it's not a true representation. Um, going all the way bright. Um, yeah, you, you can't tell through the phone video. Um, this is, it's very bright though. Um, I don't see any real dark spots going on, anything like that. Um, I will say, you could probably see it in the video. In the actual corners, there's a little bit of additional darkness kind of shadow in those corners, that doesn't bother me and I don't really notice it unless I'm looking at a menu like this, at least so far. Nope, waited too long in the settings here. But yeah, that's a small little note that I noticed um, with the corners, so where were we? We were in a picture. Um, so you got brightness, color saturation, let's turn my brightness down. Keep it at 70 for right now. Your advanced settings, you have brightness settings here, contrast, black level, going to flip through these. I'm not going to speak them all off here for you guys. Uh, color settings. Clarity settings. Uh, 
motion settings. Expert calibration for your white balance, color space, it's your white balance settings, color space settings. Not too familiar with any of that stuff. Um, your screen settings down here. Different aspect ratios. So you can actually apply your settings here, your picture settings, to different HDMI inputs. I don't know if that's something that's common on newer TVs. It's something I haven't seen before, but I thought that was a pretty cool feature right there. Um, and your reset defaults there. Here's your audio settings. I'm on standard right now. I'll try movie. It says enhanced bass. Audio output, audio processing. Here's your different audio processing settings. Um, just keep it on auto would probably be my best recommendation there. Um, advanced settings under here, under audio. Right, so that's it for display and sound. Uh, your network and internet, um, you have 5G Wi-Fi going on here. That's what I'm connected to. Um, I think you have an Ethernet port? Yeah, you do have an Ethernet port. Okay. Um, proxy settings, IP settings, network standby, check your internet connection. Let's check my internet connection. Just out of curiosity, while we're flipping through these settings, I wonder what it looks like through here. Oh, I thought it was going to tell me my speed or something. So, nah, whatever. Just let me know it's successful. Your accounts and sign-in. Uh, privacy for location, user diagnostics, ads, user agreements, Google Assistant. Um, this lists out all your different apps here. Um, here's your system. Here's the about right here. I have it on auto update. You can reset. Um, here's your status. I don't know if I really wanted to show that info, but whatever. Um, legal information. Uh, it's running uh, Android TV OS version 11. Um, I have a March 5th OS patch level. There's the kernel. There's the build. There's the product information. You can set your date and time stuff here. Set your language here. Looks like we got English, Espanol, and Francis. <laughs> Can't even say that right. Um, your different keyboard settings. Uh, your storage. It looks like this has a total storage space of 23 gigabytes. Um, I didn't see that noted anywhere on any of the articles or spec sheets. So. I guess that might be the one thing in this video that's not mentioned elsewhere, at least that I've seen, has 23 gigabytes of internal shared storage. Um, ambient mode. Not too familiar with this, but hey, it's got weather. Put that in Fahrenheit. It's kind of cool. Oh, change your ambient settings. Link your account to this TV. Uh, maybe I don't want to mess with all this stuff right now. These are the different options in here. Probably mess with this later. Power and energy settings. We'll just flip through these. This video is already, I can't believe this video is already 25 minutes long. I've been uh, rambling on here, haven't I? Here's your cast settings. Here's your system sounds. Apparently I have them off. I guess I'm gonna keep them off. Um, AirPlay and HomeKit settings. I don't use that stuff. TCL account and sign in. I still need to create an account. I haven't created one. Your parental controls. You can set up a password it looks like. Limit content for children. Um, Game Master is currently disabled. Uh, I think it only enables when the signal through the HDMI cable is correct for it. Um, if I'm thinking of that right. Here's some advanced settings here. 
remote and accessories. Uh, this does have built-in Bluetooth, so you can have Bluetooth headsets or Bluetooth soundbars with it. I'm not sure if it's like limited to Bluetooth 5, Bluetooth 4. I don't know too much about Bluetooth, but Bluetooth is in here. Um, this is my remote right here. It was paired through Bluetooth, um, help and feedback. You can send feedback or is it Google TV help? So I think that kind of does it for the settings here. Um, here's your live TV. It looks like we get some live stuff going on here. I have YouTube TV, so I do have that um, going on here. I haven't actually looked at this just yet. Um, not sure if this is a mix with my YouTube. Oh, no, look, it's Pluto, Pluto TV. That's Google TV. That's Tubi. Um, so it looks like it mixes in, you know, it's got Google TV, YouTube TV. Yeah, it's got, got quite a few built-in stuff as far as um, your live TVs going on here. Kind of cool. Um, so here's uh, your apps. Here's where we can search for new apps um, and other apps to the device. I do have Shutter, but I don't have the app on here. Let's see how it goes to install an app here. So I guess you just press install. Download for us, install it. All right, that was it. Fairly quick install, about a minute or a little bit less. So here's kind of your app store, your Google app store. I guess we consider it a Google app store. Here's your library. This looks like this is pulling from, uh, okay, so it's pulling from my YouTube DVR. I don't have too much set up on here. That's kind of cool. You can see how quick YouTube TV loads up for us. Oh, I'll do my sign in later. Anyways, let's jump over to the computer real quick. We're going to wrap this up here soon. So I'm going to press the input button up there. You can even see it. Go to HDMI 2. Um, again, we're watching through the phone, but. Here's a quick OLED TV demo of some HDR 4K fireworks. Um, I don't know what that's all about, but the thing this video really highlights to me in person is how dark the darks are in the colors and just how vibrant they are um, with, with the just straight up black, pitch black backdrop. It looks fantastic to me compared to all my other TVs. Again, this is my first QLED TV. All my other TVs are just 4K LED TVs. Um, so it's a pretty big jump for me in general, but it looks fantastic, especially these blacks here in these colors. seconds so if I press the information button you can see on my HDMI up in the corner um, we're at 4k at 120 Hertz right now HDR 10 is enabled this isn't even like if we look at it, this can't I think YouTube oh, didn't add YouTube can't support up to 120 frames per second, so I believe it's only 60, but it still looks pretty good. That's what our setting is right here. Um, I have it on 8K even though, or no, I don't have it on 8K. Let's try I can't do 8K. I don't have 8K. <laughs> and we'll still try it, I guess. We're back down to 4K. But that looks fantastic. Again, not 120 hertz or anything like that. It's at 60, but a little demo video here looks great to me. All right, 
right. Um, not too much else to go over here. Do a battlefield pulled up. Um, everybody, everybody hates this game. I still stick with battlefield. They flopped quite a bit the last couple of battlefields, and uh, the launch of this one was god awful, and it, it put me off a lot. I'm, st I, I think I want to start trying to play again. I. I haven't really played it since probably early last year. Um, I've always been so big into Battlefield, and I, I, I want to give it another chance. Um, but anyways, looking at the video settings here, um, I have it set at 4K, 120 hertz. I'm not going to play any kind of real game here. Controller's not pairing. Maybe maybe I won't play anything here. Let's see this real quick. Again, again, this is an unedited video. Wrong option there. So don't do it to me. I don't know why this thing unpaired on me. Okay. It's not connecting. Turn that off. We'll set the Xbox controller in pair mode. Add a device. All right, we're connected. Taking a little bit of a look here at Battlefield. This controller is not connected. It's still blinking. Yeah, maybe we won't take a look at any kind of game in here. But it's actually kind of aggravating me. Try one more time, and we're going to end this video here. By the way, if anybody has any questions on things they want me to look at within the settings or anything, or give an opinion on, just ask in the comments. Um, again, I'm not a TV expert. I'm just trying to help people out because I know that there are no reviews out of this video yet. It doesn't even look like it even added this controller. Might be because I'm only half paying attention here. Guessing that's it right here. It's flashing. It's not, not seeing it. When I first bought this PC a couple of years ago, I had issues with the Bluetooth and the pairing and stuff, and it looks like it might just be acting up again on me. It's a little bit of a bummer, I'd say, but I guess just trust me, I gamed a little bit. I played some Rocket League last night. Um, I played a little bit of Battlefield this morning, uh, a little bit of Forza this morning, Forza, Forza Horizon 5. Um, it, it, it works amazing with the gaming features in this, this display. Um, also, using this display as a computer, like a desktop display for the computer, it, it is fantastic. Um, way better than my Vizio that I was using for this. Um, you could just tell by how the mouse moves at this 120 hertz. There's a big difference here. Uh, last night when I was first setting this up, in my display settings, it was set to 60 hertz. And I did a little bit like moving around the mouse like this at 60 hertz. Then I switched it to 120 and I did it again. And you can just feel how much more like fluid and smooth it really is um, at 120 hertz. If you're a gamer, you know, like me, and you've always gamed on TVs at 60 hertz, and you just, you don't seem to, you don't totally, you don't, you can't totally justify to yourself, like, paying that extra price for a 120 hertz TV. You know, there is a drastic price difference um, from what I've seen between any 60 hertz displays and 120 but if you play games even a decent amount of the time, 
You know what I'm saying? If you're a real casual gamer, 60 hertz is probably fine. Who cares? But if you play any kind of a decent amount, you don't need to be some pro player, but just a decent amount, and you can afford it. Uh, after my experience of just one day at 120 hertz and just playing a few games, I'd say definitely do it if you can afford it. Um, you're missing out. <laughs> is what it comes down to. Um, same with getting a QLED or OLED, anything beyond just a regular LED display. Huge difference there. Um, now, there is a huge difference be with the HDMI 2.1 ports. I don't know all the technical differences, but I do know it's a lot better, and this is my first TV with that as well. I'm sure I'm seeing differences based on that with the gaming um, that I just don't totally understand yet. Um, but just overall, the gaming is so much better than a regular um, 4K TV with an LED panel um, with just regular 2.0 uh, HDMIs without all these other bells and whistles. Um, oh, yeah, one thing I forgot to go over or give you guys a quick glimpse at. Um, if you press this button right here, right above my finger. It brings up this little menu down here. And you have like a picture mode. Um, you have sleep timer. You have the game master. You have your Bluetooth. Um, it's kind of some quick settings, but the main thing I was going to show is this game master. So when this is on and you go back to that button again and you hold it down for a few seconds, you get this game master like overlay here so we can see my frames per second is 120 hdr is on allm is off vr is off i don't know if it allm i don't even know what the hell that is off hand um in the vrr um but those two settings are obviously gaming specific i don't know if those just turn on once a game starts that's sending that signal i'm going to look into those settings a little bit more again disclaimer not a tv guy um, or TV expert guy. So I'm not totally familiar with those settings, um, but I'm going to look more into them. So anyways, it looks like you can take screenshots. Let's take a quick screenshot, I guess. Okay. So I guess it saved it to my Google, maybe my Google Drive photos. I don't know, um, but it definitely saved it to a gallery here, at least internally on the TV. Um, here's your different game picture modes. You got FPS, RPG, original, um, Leave it on FPS for right now. It seems real bright and vibrant. Some kind of shadow enhancement. Not familiar with this. Um, toggling between these two, it looks like it makes it a little bit brighter, but I know it's obviously doing something else with that. An aiming aid. I don't know why the heck this is on here, but I guess you get an aiming aid. Um, I'm not going to use that stuff. Uh, here's your menu. So H. GIG, HDR Gaming Interest Group, only available when HDR signal detected. Xbox may disable HGIG when HDR and Dolby Vision are enabled at the same time. I have no idea what this HGIG stuff is, but like HGIG stuff is, but hey, there it is. Um, screenshot with game bar hidden. Game bar will be hidden while taking a screenshot when enabled. Um, I guess there's probably a, a quick screenshot button on the remote that I'm just not aware of just yet figure that out here's your aiming aid settings if you really need something like that because you're a noob gamer um, <laughs> here's your fac um, looks like up in the top left it's it's letting you know what device you have i guess since i have a gaming computer it says unknown device but i would imagine if you have a playstation 5 like hooked up it'll say playstation 5 um, if you have an xbox one hooked up probably says an xbox one etc etc That'd be my guess. Um, and I think that's really it. I can't think of anything else um, that I was going to show. So again, this is kind of the first look at the Q7. Not a professional review guy, but I really just wanted to show you guys um, all the different settings here, especially the interface and all that, to go over some of the features, uh, give you guys kind of a first look. Um, and basically open up the comment section on this video if anybody has any questions about this TV that they want me to take a look at and give my personal opinion on or whatever, just let me know. Um, 
and and I'll try to respond with some kind of useful information for you guys. So I think I've rambled on enough. I did not think this was going to become a 42 minute video. I was thinking it'd be like 15 or 20 minutes, but hey, I ramble on a lot and I've had a lot of coffee this morning. So you got a lot of me talking. Hopefully you found some of this information useful. I will provide the Amazon purchase link in the description of this video. Obviously, it's an affiliate link. I would get a little cut out of it, but I buy all my stuff on my own. I'm not some big YouTuber. You know, I make like $3 in commission off my YouTube videos a month. It's not a big thing, but if you just happen to be watching this video and you decided, hey, I do want to buy this TV and you're buying it through Amazon, click my link. I get a little bit of commission if I helped you out. You know, it helps me out. I helped you out. Hey, great deal. Um, but I'm not looking for that. It's not a big deal. If there's a sale going on at Best Buy, go buy it at Best Buy. My commission's not that important. Um, anyways, enough rambling again. Any questions? Just let me know in the comments. Anything you guys need to correct me on that I um, mispronounced or did not describe correctly, it was totally in left field on something, just let me know um, in the comments. All right. Thank you for watching.